Father, you've been grateful to us once again. Thank you for waking us up this morning to come together to praise your name, to glorify you, to hear your words, and to intercede on behalf of our friends, <coughs> our families, our members, our worldwide church, our nation. We ask the Lord that as we open our mouths that you will prepare our hearts for what is set before us. And we thank you for your word, which will accomplish that it is set out to accomplish. <coughs> Thank you for each person here. Thank you for the sacrifice for this morning. May we always continue to keep you ever before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to begin with hymn number 73. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our soul shall rise to thee. Number 73. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to be. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, the child of heaven, hallowed be your name. Yes. Father, we come before you this morning giving you thanks and giving you praise. You waken us up this morning. There's nothing that said we should have been woken up this morning about anyone that did not. But Father, you woke us up this morning and God, we are grateful. You have brought us here, Father God, to worship you. And you said in your word, where two or three are gathered in my name, my presence is among you. So we welcome your Holy Spirit, Father we God. Pray. We ask that you would have your way today, Father God. Touch our hearts, and Father, when we leave here, that we leave here to transform to do your work. We pray for the entire service, everyone participating, Father, we ask that you would lead and guide. The message that is presented today, Father God, presented with power and conviction. Let your man servant be anointed, Father God, and give us your message that we may leave here filled with your Holy Spirit. Your precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 Most of all, this evening, thank you, Father God. Amen. It is said that more things are brought by prayer than this world ever dreams of, and that's the reason why we are here. In the times in which we live, and so many challenges, when you think about what's going on in our world today in the health sector, the political and otherwise, we need God's presence. And so yeah. just glad to be here together and trust that when we leave here this morning, we would have drawn that much closer to the Lord and understanding his purpose for our life. I always tell people that everyone is a minister. You may not be a pastor, but everyone is a minister. Yes. The question that God wants you to answer since he has saved you is, how are you going to minister for him, to his people? And his people is the world, all seven billion of us. So just want to say once again, welcome, as we continue to worship, the fellowship, but most of all, to seek the face of God. Amen. Amen.
thank you so much that we can ask petition on behalf of others and that we know that you will hear and answer our prayer. And so, Lord, as we bow before your holy presence this morning, I ask you to touch each and every person that sits or stands here and help them, Lord, that they may be open to the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, we know that you want to give us good gifts, and this is the best gift that you can give us. Because the Holy Spirit is with us all the time, not sometimes. And so, Father, we ask that we may be continually asking for your forgiveness so that there would be no sin in our lives, so that the Holy Spirit would take our rest. Father, we in a special way ask that you be with the leaders of our conference. We ask you to be with the pastors, the ministers, Father, those in the Valley of Decision, those that have said yes to you, those, Father, who are wondering if they have done the right thing. Oh, Lord, help us to realize that we can do no good thing unless we deserve it. And that we take you in our hearts and keep you there. Yes. Give us the strength and the courage, Lord, as we go through this new day. Yes. That we may be joyful and knowing that you love us. Yes. That we may be joyful and knowing that we can do all things through you who strengthen us. Yes. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Yes. Thank you for the privilege of praise. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for friends, family, and loved ones. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. To your holy name. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, as we pause a little longer, help that we may continue to love and trust and serve you all the days of our lives. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor in your great name. We just want to tell you we love you. Oh God, you are worthy of all the praise and the glory of God. And so we thank you as we come this morning for another opportunity of prayer. We pray that God that you will have over us, Holy Spirit. Bathe our brows, bathe our hearts, Lord, our minds, our souls. Father, we present ourselves to you. Nothing we bring, nothing in our hands we simply come to your cross. Father, we ask that you search us, Lord. Know our hearts today. Try us and know the thoughts that we bring. And see if there's anything in us that's not like the Lord taking it away. But we confess our sins, our faults before you. And I say that if we confess you're faithful, you're just, to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. And so we thank you, Lord, for your shed blood. We thank you, that God, for receiving the forgiveness. We pray, our Father. Sins. We thank you, O oh Father. Because today as we come in your presence, that Lord, that thou would have mercy upon us. Oh God, in this world of sin, in this world of so many activities, God, that threatens our lives, our souls. But we give you glory and honor that God, that if we hide ourselves in you, we are going to be all right, God. And so we just want to bless you today. We just want to magnify you. God, that our souls, that God, will be hidden within a peace, that God, with you. And that God, as we come, we pray for the point. Before you know people, Father, you know us by name, by nature. For fathers, our faces are different, so are our needs and our complex situations. And so we pray that as you look upon us, dear God, we pray that you would be ever to heal. Mm -hmm. God, every sick body that's here, even this morning, yes. that you would heal them, God. You promised that you would send your word and yes. heal us, Lord. And so mm -hmm. we thank you for healing us. It's the children's bread. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray those who may be discouraged this morning, encourage them now. Those that God who was hurting, dear Lord, and don't know where to turn. Because of needs, dear Lord, we pray that you would meet every need, Father. Yes. Go to every home where there is relationship problems, where there's home and family problems, we pray. Put it in your hands even right now, Lord. Oh, God, go before them. Father, you promise to send your angels even before us, dear Lord, to make the way, to fix the way, to do whatever men, whatever broken hearts in every situation. We pray, Father. This way before you, mighty God, in Jesus' name. I think we pray that God that when you shall come in your kingdom, Father, that you will receive us where we can be with you throughout the seasons, ages of eternity. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord. Yes. Oh, fear to come. Yes, yes. A shelter from a stormy blast and our eternal hope. Yes. This morning, oh God, 
we present ourselves to you. Nothing in our hands we bring, dear Father, but only for your cross we pray. Yes. We thank you for waking us up from our beds, dear God, and putting it in our hearts to come out and worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we come confessing sin before we can even ask you anything. And so, dear Lord, after we have asked for forgiveness of our sins, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. This morning, oh God, we present the youth of the nation before all. You said in your word, stop now and consider God before you are any older. You said, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. When the evil days come not and the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Oh God, we know that Satan will find mischief, idle hands to do. But your servant said, dear Lord, with such a mighty army as youth as these, rightly trained by those of us who have the knowledge to train them, they will do a mighty work that we cannot do. Oh, Heavenly Father, help that the youth of the nation will focus upon you, who was a youth, and you grew up in Nazareth because they said nothing good could come out of Nazareth. And Father, regardless of which part these youths are, something good can come out because Jesus is in their lives. We need to carry Jesus to the youth, dear Father. We have to live the life that comes so the youth can look at us as an example. Oh, Heavenly Father, it is not easy, but at the same time, it is not impossible. Because you are the one who are doing the training. This morning, dear Father, we pray that the youth of Englishton Church will take the message to the other youth of the outside, and they will be a beacon, dear Heavenly Father. Because you tell them, let your light so shine, so that the men will see their good works and then glorify you who are the Heavenly Father. So this morning, dear God, all we are asking is, please take the youth of the nation and make a reformation, a transformation in their lives. Yes, we can give it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise, honor, and glory because it all belongs to you. Yes. Father, we are not worthy of the breath we breathe, but God, you pump your breath into our nostrils. God, we are grateful. Yes. Forgive us, O oh God, of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We realize that we are creatures of corruption and we are sinful by nature. So we come to you in full dependency, O oh Father God, on you. Depending on you for strength, depending on you for wisdom, depending on you for understanding. Father God, we know that as the branch cannot bear fruit except the by the divine, Father God, we abide in you, Father, that we may be nourished and filled with your Holy Spirit. Yes, Father, you heard of the prayers that went up. We ask, O oh God, that you would hear these prayers, O oh Father God. You said in your word, whatsoever things you pray, believing, you shall receive. <coughs> so, Father God, we pray these prayers with faith, believing that you will answer these prayers, O oh God. We thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this morning. It's a privilege we do not... Thank you once again. In your precious, glorious name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There's so much for us to be thankful for. Yes. Yes. So we're giving you that opportunity to express your thankfulness to God. Amen. We're happy to be here this morning, aren't we? Amen. 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 You are the beautiful smiles. You wouldn't think this is early in the morning. Yes. Oh, yes. But I want to start off um, what I'm thankful for. Um, and then you could take turns. We're gonna make sure that your time is short because we're gonna move on. We're gonna get out of here. But um, uh, so make sure consider other persons who would like to give their testimony as well. But you know what I'm thankful for? I am thankful for um, living for a faith church. Guess what? Amen. Amen. <laughs> From we had the last crusade. If I know um, they had. Um, what was the name of the crusade we had? The last one. In yeah. August, August, right? Work with me, people. The reaping campaign, yeah. Yeah. right? And um, they had the. Um, we met there for a prayer meeting in the mornings, and ever since I've been going to morning prayer meeting, yeah. and they have been consistent. Yeah. And I was like, hold on, wait. Uh, all the churches have been missed? 
you know, I mean, I know it's been going on, but consistency yeah. is important. Yeah. And so from that, we passed, we brought it back into New Englanders mm -hmm. to have our own oh, prayer meeting yeah. every morning, and it's yeah. been a blessing. <coughs> so living faith, so why you haven't been seeing us sometimes? Because we get our own little prayer meeting going on, you know? Yeah. But I'm thankful for um, living faith being so consistent. I see some of the members that are here, some of the prayer meet, um, persons in the morning are here. I know some of them are still holding the fort, so those persons are not here, but they're holding that fort down. They, they, when they say they're going to have prayer meeting in the morning, they mean they're going to have prayer meeting even if it's one, or two, maybe three, but they're going to have it. So I'm thankful to that. Anybody, I'm opening the floor now. If anyone else is going to want to testify, Frankie, you're always testifying. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you. Yes. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to give a lot of thanks for trying my life. Um, so many things that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. So many places I've been. But I am here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, something that's been fighting against me a long time. Mm -hmm. I just asked to bring my commitment to God. Mm -hmm. so, to God mercies and His grace, and I'm still holding on. Amen. I believe that God He has a way sometimes of um, building you up. Yeah. Sometimes that means breaking you down. Mm -hmm. So I just want to give Him thanks for everything that He has allowed to happen to me in my life that draw me closer. Because I realized that had it not been for the time I spent in prayer and communion with Him, I wouldn't have put it through. I want, to pray, I want to ask you to pray for me mm -hmm. and my family and I, our entire church that God continue to move mm -hmm. and just bring us up a little higher and take us to the next level that we will continue this work. Amen. 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 I'm giving God thanks this morning for His mercy, for His grace, and His favor on my life. Amen. And I thank Him that I can be collaborative to do His work here on earth. Amen. 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 I want to. Thank God for his protection. Yes. Because, you know, as business owner, um, yes. there there's so much evils of yes. evil and wickedness. Yes. I have one of my yes. customers, one of my loyal customers came in and he had a patch over his eyes. And I was like, oh my goodness, what did you do to yourself? He said it was a robbery. Yes. And he said that the guy came up, young guy, put the gun to his head and shot. Didn't mm. ask him for money because he could have given them what he had. Shot and the bullet came through here and out through here. And you see a little spot where it came. Uh, this eye is gone, but he is alive. And he said, I'm just praising the Lord because I have life. And he looked fine apart from this thing over his eye. And that's just to show you how merciless people are. And the Bible says that they are, their conscience is seared with a hot iron. Only the protection of God is keeping us. Even from this virus that's going, that's traveling all around. The Lord said he's going to keep us from the noise of pestilence. And he also said to the leaves of the trees for the healing of the nation. He asked the Lord to guide and direct and I thank him for his protection. Amen. 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 Come to our house for lunch, but I wasn't even thinking there and went in the kitchen for some reason. And the other day, asked me to fix some rice. And when I went in the kitchen, I got caught up. So after that, I went home. I decided I'm gonna go home. I went home, and my son came there. One of them, both of them. One came home, the older one, and then the third one. He came. And we were outside just talking, and we smelled smoke. So I said, I don't have anything on in the house. Came back out, we checked. But we still smelling the smoke. I went in through the house and went to the back. I saw the neighbor had a little smoke going on in the back of the yard, so I thought it was nothing. But we came back in the front of outside of the yard in the front of their house. 
and he's still smelling the smoke. And I said to me, he said, but I still smell the smoke. I have a very troublesome neighbor. And we looked upstairs, this house is on fire. And when I say God is good and he will keep us in perfect peace, God is going to do just as he said. And so the car reversed and it left 
And I looked around and I went back inside. And my wife said to me, Why, why you? I thought you only was going to look right outside. Why are you going all over the road? We don't know. You know? But I, I guess that's, not, that's just how men are, you know? But I didn't think about it until afterward. That same vehicle could have been the very vehicle that the person was in, because that's what I thought about it later. I said, this vehicle, the back lights are like the same lights of my wife's car. Mm -hmm. Probably was the same one, they're the same people trying to keep the bumper. Yes. And I said, Lord, what if I was right there? What if this person had a gun? Yes. What if they had decided that they're gonna run me over? Because I really wasn't paying that vehicle no attention. I didn't think that vehicle had nothing to do with what had happened. Mm -hmm. And that person could have run me. I didn't think about it that afterward. I said, Lord, I thank you for yes. keeping me safe. Yes. So, you know, we never know. We take those things for granted. Yes. And God is watching over us. All the time. Amen. 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 some prayers for making me up in my right mind. Yeah. And thanking him for, my, for keeping me and my family together. Thank you. I thank him because, you know, I have sisters younger than me and older than me. And they, I feel so sorry sometimes because it seems as if the younger ones are losing it and the older ones are losing it. You know, they have to keep talking, you know, like sometimes we come to say, they talk the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. So I just give God thanks because most of them, and my family, they always have to call me and talk to me. And I give God thanks for this. Because this is why every day I wake up, I ask him. Thank him and I ask him to keep me in my right mind. Let my mind stay on him. Amen. So all I have to do is continue to thank him. And I know he's going to keep me. And I most of all, I thank him for this, for our church. That Amen. Seven Amen. Seven. Amen. They have Amen. followed me and saved me. And I know he will carry me. Amen. 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 You know, some of you may not have, might have want to testify. You may not have the opportunity, but God will still hear you testify in your heart. So right now we want to just continue with the program. Thank you so much for your testimonies.
see, so yeah. we can't take too much of that. <laughs> and I friend. Um, so I have five or seven minutes. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be here this morning. We invite your Holy Spirit to speak to us in this moment, this unkind weather. But you've created seasons and different aspects of the climate, but it has been disturbed <coughs> by human activity and the fact that sin entered the world. I pray that you may speak to us. Yes. May your name and your name alone be glorified. Yes. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Dion, and I'm glad that you have decided to be here mm -hmm. this morning. There was a beautiful lady who decided that she would purchase a piece of property an upscale yet commercial area to build a duplex. She did. She wanted to build that structure, but she didn't have the money. She went to a commercial bank and bought a loan. She contracted someone to build. She had a nice duplex. At the end, she put it on rent. When they were about to sign the contract, the two families came and they signed the lease agreement and everything. But they told her that they do not have the first and last, and of course, security deposit. But she took their word, and the contract was signed. They start living in the building. But they did not give her any money. She took their word, and she accepted. And being a Christian, they already moved in. She didn't want to put them out. She felt bad. It's been six months. And they're still living in our house, not paying rent. It got to a point where the situation bordered her to the point where she was sick. Yeah. She, she experienced what they call psychosomatic illness. Mm -hmm. What affect the mind affected the physical body. And she didn't have the heart or the goal to put them up. Mm -hmm. So they live in a house free. Yet, it did not affect them. Wow. It affected who? Her. It affected her. That beautiful lady could be me. That beautiful lady could be you. This morning I want to talk to you about what are the things that prevent you from experiencing your blessing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have anybody living in your heart right now and you, they, you don't want to put them out? Amen. 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 Tell me 
some of the things that prevent you from experiencing God's blessing? What are the things that prevent you from flying? Is there someone in your heart right now? Some of the things that prevent us from experiencing God's blessing, anger, yes. hello somebody, yes. malice, yes. jealousy, yes. disobedience, These people were living in that woman's house for free. Is there someone living in your heart right now? Unforgiveness? Somebody has done you something five years ago, it's still in your heart, yet you come to pray, right? We pray. But we cannot experience healing because we hold in certain things in our heart. That's yes. right. Jealousy, malice, anger, disobedience to God's law. Is there someone in your heart? As I look through, I've discovered a number of things that prevent us from experiencing God's blessing and healing. Our first Bible passage is found in Psalm chapter 66, verses 18 to 20. Uh, the scripture declares, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I cannot experience healing from those unless I let it go. There's a difference between sin and iniquity. Iniquity is you know you are doing something wrong and you refuse to let it go. We cannot be free. We cannot experience healing unless we forget. That's right. Mm -hmm. David says, but verily God had heard me. Mm -hmm. He had attended to the voice of my prayer. Mm -hmm. Blessed be God, which had not turned away my prayer. Proverbs chapter 28, 
verses 9 and 13. And we'll come back to Ephesians. Proverbs 28, verses 9 and 13. You see, in our culture today, we say homosexuality is an abomination to the Lord. The Bible says so as well, right? But you want to know what else is an abomination? Read that verse for me. Proverbs 28, verse 9. What does it say? He that turns away his hair from hearing the Lord, even his prayer shall be an abomination. If you are walking, if you are living in disobedience, you should not even be praying. Because the very prayer that you pray is what? This is God's word. And when God says something, he gets it what? Right. The first time. You cannot improve on that. Whoever turns away his ear from hearing the law. Even his very prayer is an abomination. Verse 13 says, He who covers his sin shall not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. We need to be free. Jesus came to set us free. But we put a block, we put a stumbling block in our way. That's why the text says, the hands of God is not too short. But our iniquity puts a barrier, puts a block. Mm -hmm. If we let people go today, you will experience healing today. You come here to pray, right? You come for, for victory, right? You come here to be set free. Yeah. It could happen this morning. Oh, yes. All you need to do is let that man go. Yes. Let that woman go in your heart. Yes. You have to be free. Look at Ephesians 4. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 4, <coughs> verses 22. What Paul says? Put off what? Concerning the fallen conversation. The whole man, which is corrupt according to the people around us. And be renewed. Scroll down to verse verses 31 and 32. Let or what? Put away. Forgiveness. Oh, no. You sing in the same choir. Yeah. 
Yeah, you cannot see eye to eye. Yeah, you see me coming this way. You walk the other way. Yeah, you yeah, come up there to pray. You come up there to sing. You come up there to preach. You come up there. You cannot stand me. I can't stand you. Mercy. This is practical. This is this gets to the deepest level. We we could put on a good show. We could smile. Oh, I'm glad you are here. But deep down in your heart. Of mercy. These little things can prevent us. They will prevent you from experiencing healing. Yeah. You cannot get the victory. You cannot experience breakthrough if you don't let it go. Paul said, put away all bitterness. Wrath. speaking. Anger. Yeah. Clamor. Yeah. An evil speaking. Yeah, With all malice, hmm. be kind. Be no, kind to one another. Uh, Tender hearted. Forgiving. One another. Even as God in Christ mm -hmm. forgive us. Not only those, uh, but disobedience, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, we as Seventh day Adventists ought to know better than anybody else, mm -hmm. everybody else. Even this coronavirus. Affecting so many people in China and the rest of the world. Thank God we have no cases yet in the Bahamas. I hope it remains that way. Hallelujah. Amen. But as a people, we are living in this mm -hmm. Some of us are experiencing sickness as a result of disobedience. There was a time. Seventh day at Venice used to be obedient. We are having too many deaths mm. unnecessarily. You see, disobedience, we, we think disobedience to the Ten Commandments is sufficient. Mm. Or, or obeying the Ten Commandments is sufficient. But some of us are being disobedient to the dietary laws. Yeah. Yeah. We have done diabetes, depression, cancer. Brethren, we have to accept that. We have to admit that we all have our weaknesses. Because of our biological makeup, naturally, the woman has more resistance than the man in some respect. I have to be careful how I say this. <laughs> but my concern as a being too many men are dying, too many women are remaining in the church without their husband. I 
and I have been doing an investigation to try to determine is there a link between what the sisters are feeding the men and their death. This is my this is the first time I'm saying this publicly. I've been I've been studying this thing. No, you, you may laugh. You may laugh. But this is my person. This is the first time Pastor I'm sharing this in public. I've been watching Jerry for at least 10 to 15 years. Why is it that so many men are dying and we have so much women without their husbands and children without their fathers? Well, my study is not yet um, complete. complete. Sister Hannah, I'm still, I'm still in research. But the investigation, Dr. Hannah, is to see if there is a correlation. Is there a link between what you see the sisters through their menstrual uh, menstrual cycle could get rid of certain things when they eat but it is more difficult for the men now don't take this this is not scientific um, don't go don't go there and say well the pastor said um, uh, the sisters are causing the death of their husband by <laughs> My findings are not yet final. I'm still in the investigative phase. But just want you to think about it. Maybe, maybe there is a link. I mean, it, it, I could be wrong. But maybe there is a link. But we have less. So, the point is, if you want your husband to stick around long, feed him the rice bowl, please. Huh? That's all I'm saying. This is a research I'm doing, all right? This is a research I'm doing. Uh, I, I just, I just share with you my finding thus far. I'm trying to draw a conclusion. I ain't reached there yet. You, you heard the conclusion? But I mentioned the coronavirus. But God said it long time ago if we walk in obedience. But sometimes we are afraid of reading this text. Let me read it for you. Exodus 15, verse 26. Whether you want to accept it or not, but God said so. He said what? If you are diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right.
And when they check their diet, they discover that the same diet we're using, that's what they were using. That is why God took them out in the wilderness to have their system purified and be detoxicated. Because they were on their way to terrestrial Canaan. But we say we are Israelites. If we are the requirements for them is for us today if the parallel is true. Yes. Would God require of ancient Israel that's what he requires of us today? Amen. Complete obedience. Yes. Complete surrender. Yes. Put away malice. Put away bitterness. Put away all of these things. Then our prayer will be answered. We will experience victory. We will experience deliverance. We will experience healing. If not, we're wasting our time. Final passage before I sit down. Go with me to Job. That makes me. Job 42, verses 10 to 17. We're just going to read the passage. We're not going to comment too much on it. See, we pray. But we're still holding people in our hearts. How could we experience healing? How could we experience forgiveness? How could we experience transformation? You have to let it go. It's making you sick. Let them go. Let her go. Let him Go! Let the co-worker go! Let the, the, the man who mistreated you go! Let the neighbor go, my sister, that's what you did. And he's coming around, you know. Look at me, Job. Can we read it? Job 42, yes. verse 10. What does it say? And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. When? It is an adverb of time. Job's captivity would not have been ended until. Let's read it again. Let's go. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for who? His friends. When he prayed for his friends. The same friend who came to comfort him. The same friend who blamed him. You said because you did something wrong. You know you have some friends who tell you that? Oh, yeah. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Mm -hmm. Also the Lord gave Job what? Twice, Twice as much as what? He had before. Then came there unto him what? All, listen, when you go into something, you don't see them. But when they turn to rejoicing, they are they ready to take picture? Yes. <laughs> Want to start with you, but when you were under, you yes. never yes. see them. Yes. Huh? <laughs> I'm saying, where were they? You remember Job was there by himself, with world and everything, scratching himself? Yeah. The, at least the three friends were better than the brethren. Yes. Right on, so yes. Yes. Right they came, mm -hmm. they told him what they perceived. Mm -hmm. The text 
It says, and there came unto him all of his brethren Hello, really and well. all his sisters. Really well. I mean, where were they? Yeah. <laughs> and all that has been his acquaintance, the same, the, the schoolmates, the classmates, they all came around yeah. and did what? Eat yeah. bread yeah. in his house. And he was in quarantine, nobody came by. Wow. <laughs> and they bemoan him and comforted him over all the evil. That is in God also. That the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him what? Listen. People have money for you, you know. You know why they bring it? Why? You ain't praying for them, you still hold them in their heart, in your heart. So you holding your blessing? Yeah. You stopping your blessing, bro? Yeah. You hungering your blessing? Yeah. Let them go, let the money come.
put away malice, mm -hmm. put away anger, mm -hmm. put away clamor. It's hurting you. You have people living in your house, in your heart now. That's what I mean. And they're not paying rent. Yes. Hello. Mm. How could you have such a big man living in your heart? If you want to experience physical healing, Walk in obedience. Oh yeah. Not only the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. but the dietary laws as well. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we know about the commandments, we know about all those things. But the little thing that prevent us from experience healing and victory. Mm -hmm. And the devil knows what power we have in Jesus. How effective we can be! Pentecost did not come until they confessed their sin in one God! If the Seventh Day Administration, the South Bahamas Conference, comes together, we put away differences, we put away malice, we put away anger, we put away jealousy, we put away envy, and we pray God will pour His Spirit out for that. will be such a power of God, this country will be shaken. Let any 
anything to offer my healing, anything to offer my victory.
your face will be radiant. You will have joy. You will have peace. You will have physical, mental, and spiritual healing. You will experience the victory. Brother, no.